what is your exact podcast process? Exact podcast process. So we, we bring on guests to our show. Um, so primarily CMOs, VPs, and directors of marketing mm -hmm. um, to share their insights on the industry with our audience um, and their peers. So once we record, um, we put the podcast up, uh, we use Anchor throw it up on anchor, um, add an intro outro to it. Don't do a ton of editing. And then it's a podcast, right? Mm -hmm. But when we're on zoom is, uh, that's where we record, we record the video and the audio, and then we go in and we chop up the video, um, to like micro clips. And then we distribute that content on LinkedIn, because if we were to just to take the link to our podcast and put that in a post and say, Hey, go listen, no one's really going to click on that. Um, it's not going to be interesting. So we actually take value from the episode itself, mm -hmm. put it on LinkedIn and then let people consume the content. And then we take the link to the show and we put it in the comments. And then we do the same thing with, um, quote graphics. So if there's an interesting point that the guest brings up, then we turn it into a quote, put their, uh, their face on it and then put it up on LinkedIn. Um, I think that a lot of companies, when they start a podcast, they kind of sleep on the distribution side of things and just hope that people will discover the show in Apple or right. Spotify. And I think the key is really chopping up the content and getting it out to the world in short form. Is there a certain strategy to figuring out the number of short clips that you get from the full video? Or, or is it just, nope, we only do... Um, three and that's it. So for us, um, we're doing one right now. And then if we have like a bigger name guest, we'll go like two or three. So for example, um, Chris is like Chris Walker, we had on the show and he's like the, uh, the only one we did this for so far, but well, we got like 10 videos out of his podcast. Um, and wow. we like blasted that on LinkedIn. Um, we even made a slide deck out of you know, something that he brought up, which was really interesting. It did really well. Um, so that one, we got a ton of content from, but in general, uh, we normally chop up one to two videos and then we send it to the guests and then we post it on LinkedIn, um, with copy as well, just in case people don't watch the video. Right. I think that's important. Um, could we get more out of our, out of our podcast? Yes, for sure. But right now it's more of a resources thing. Um, when it comes to like, how much can we get out of it? And then on top of that, um, we'd be posting multiple times a day on LinkedIn as well. We'd run out of room right. <laughs> on our pages. So uh, this is like the sweet spot for us right now. Nice. And then you started YouTube recently, mm -hmm. a YouTube channel. Um, do you also upload the full, uh, you know, episode there and then the short clip as well? Or are you, is that still in experiment phase? So it's in the experimental phase for sure. If you were to go look at our, our YouTube right now, it has just a few videos up because we have like this library that we have to get onto the channel. Um, but right now what we're doing is we are taking the entire episode, the video format, and we're putting it on YouTube, hopefully for some discoverability. And then also for like, if people want to go and see like what shows have been out there and they're not really into the podcasting world and they'd like to see video and like facial expressions and things like that, then right. that's there for them to go do that. Um, again, very, very early stages. Um, when it comes to like the shorter clips though, um, one thing that does have a lot of reach that we will be trying out eventually are YouTube shorts. Um, the organic potential that you have with that, just because YouTube, it's new to YouTube and YouTube's going to prioritize it because it's right. new and they want people to use it. Um, you might be able to get some, some good reach out of that. So we'll, we'll try it out soon, but we haven't done that yet. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. Are you guys also going to experiment with, uh, TikTok and Instagram at all, or just with TikTok eventually in the future? So Instagram, we haven't done anything with, um, the platform overall is extremely mature. But there's a there's like a catch. They have Instagram Reels now, which is extremely prioritized by by Instagram because it's a new feature and they want to pull people off TikTok to Instagram. So you get a ton of organic reach with right. Instagram Reels. So like even though the platform as a whole is mature and you don't get a lot of reach, that sector or that like function of of Instagram could build a page massively. Um, so that's really interesting, even though we haven't tried it. 
Yeah. As for as for TikTok, um, honestly, all I've all I've pretty much done is use like their video editor and their music and made a couple like marketing videos and then saved it and then put it on LinkedIn because that's where I have an audience. And I've posted uh, on TikTok those videos and they don't do super well by any means. But it is interesting to know that like more marketers are going to be on there and are on there consuming content because when I post on LinkedIn the TikTok video, right. it does like really well. And then people are like, oh, I didn't know there was a marketing side of TikTok. <laughs> I'm already on it. I'll have to go like follow you. So it's it's funny to think about, but eventually that's where everyone will be, whether it's whether Instagram Reels kind of takes over um, mm-hmm. TikTok kind of like they did Snapchat. And now no one really uses Snapchat. Right. Either way, people are going to be on Instagram doing that or they're going to be on TikTok. So it's something to keep in mind. Totally. The other question I was going to ask you is content strategy. So what's your mindset? What's your content strategy when it comes to LinkedIn? Because there's a lot of people that want to know uh, specifically, you know, what's a good time to post? Um, how often should I post on LinkedIn? Uh, so thought I'd just ask you directly. Yeah. So right now, it's a co- my page specifically is a combination of content that we get from our podcasts. So one graphic one video, normally in the beginning of the week and the end of the week is when I would post those. And that gives me three to four days for the rest of the week. Um, like business days is typically what I'm posting right now to create my own content. A lot of it's written. Um, you know, eventually we have done this in the past, but we need to get like, again, our library like edited, Mm -hmm. but I can post a video from, for example, this podcast, a clip from here. Um, we've done graphics, of things that I've said in, in past posts and those take off. But as for the content strategy in the beginning of the week, it's a post about the podcast middle of the week. It's like my marketing content, um, that I, you know, think will help marketers. And then at the end of the week, it's, you know, one final post about the podcast episode of the week. Um, so I think like that cadence has been, you know, pretty good when it comes to like giving exposure to one, the podcast, and then two myself as a content creator. So that's how we, we tackle it. And right now we're not posting on weekend weekends. I used to do that and get pretty decent reach to be honest. Um, and then the summer happened and like no one was on LinkedIn during the summer. So <laughs> I just stopped and I haven't picked it up again yet, but I kind of enjoy having the weekends, uh, off when it comes yeah, to yeah, like yeah. posting, but who knows? I mean, I see a lot of people posting and, and doing well, um, I just need a breather. 